Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how not to start your car. If you want to keep your engine lasting longer and not do any damage. Most cars are made to just start. Turn the key, start. You don't have to do anything. They're all fuel injected. You don't want to touch the accelerator. It doesn't need touching. And if you forgot that your car is running, do not turn the key to start it again. Now doing so won't instantly destroy your car. The starters are built smartly enough. Of course the original ones weren't they would have burned out. It's a lot. The Bendix drive, the starter has a little gear that pops out and then that meshes with the flywheel and spins the engine. Realize that the starter gear will freewheel. If you do engage it, it will spin the starter. That's why if you start your car up and rev it up while you're starting it, the engine can rev and it doesn't do any real damage because the flywheel is already engaged to the starter gear and the starter gear will freewheel. It'll just spin so it won't destroy anything if you do it when you're starting it first. I mean, it's not a good idea to leave it cranking forever anyway, but if you forget, that won't hurt anything. But if the car's already started, and then you hit the starter again, as that Bendix drive pops out, generally it's gonna mash against the spinning flywheel, make horrible noises, chink, chink. Now that's not a good thing. If you do it many times, the gear on the starter and the Bendix drive will start getting chipped, but that's the least of your worries because starters don't cost all that much. It can be easily replaced, but that's not the case for the flywheel. Bolts to the back of the engine. When you turn the key, the starter teeth engage on the flywheel, it's a 360 degree circle and it just spins on the gears, spins the flywheel. Well, if you start chipping the teeth off on a flywheel, since the flywheel is between the engine and the transmission, you got to pull either the engine or the transmission out in order to change the flywheel, a gigantic pain in the rear end job. Now, in most cases, it's easier pulling a transmission, but still, most people drive automatic transmissions. They're very heavy. They're a royal pain to pull off of a car. You don't want to have to do something like that because you weren't paying attention and you turned the starter on when the engine was already running. Now, another thing not to do when you start your car is don't rev your engine up. The worst time for your engine is when it's set all night, then you start it up. The lubrication, the oil has to be pumped all through the system. You got to build up oil pressure. It's got to go from the bottom sump pump all the way up to the overhead cams and the valves. You don't want to just start it and rev it up. Start it and just let it run for a few seconds. It doesn't take more than a few seconds for the engine to get oil pressure all over the place. But since about 90% of your engine wear and the metal parts occurs during startups, you don't want to rev your engine up right when you start it up. Now it is a good idea to turn all your accessories off before you start the car. But in modern cars, it's not really all that big of a deal. Because modern cars, even this 94 Celica, it has relays for the air conditioning system and other systems so that when you start the car there isn't any kind of voltage surge that can destroy the air conditioning system or the radio or whatever and really today it's only going to consume such a small amount of electricity it really doesn't matter now if you're driving an old junker and your battery's going out and the engine's uh, if you're not going to go out and buy a brand new battery, <laughs> it's a good idea to turn everything off before you start it because you might drain enough out that the car won't start. But leaving stuff on when you crank the car these days, that's an old wives tale that doesn't fit anymore. It's not going to hurt anything if you've got to turn the AC off. There's relays for all that stuff. But if you do have a poorly made car like a Fiat and they're full of relays, yeah those relays will burn out faster if you don't turn everything off because they're so poorly made. <laughs> And they got tons of relays all over the place. So for those things, turn everything off before you start the car. And to make sure your car starts every time, hey, do like I do. Make sure you got clean battery terminals here. Now, I do have to say, there's a little bit of crud here, but that's not on a terminal. That's on the hold down strap. I need to clean it and paint it. You can see the paint's come off and it's all rusty now. Corrosion is the enemy of electrical system. If you see any corrosion, clean it off. Then seal it with some anti-corrosion paint when you're done. You don't want to have any kind of corrosion. Car might not start because all this stuff has gotten eaten up. Simple thing to check once in a while. Clean it off with a brush, spray it with some cleaner. And perhaps one of the most forgotten things when you're starting your car is the whole battery is negative and positive. Positive one feeds all the positive bars. 
but the negative one grounds the entire car. And if you don't have ground circuits, it's not going to work. Make sure this end is clean and follow the other end and make sure that the ground is nice and clean and not corroded. These ground wires are often hidden all over the place, often under things where you can't even see them. Engine to chassis ground, it has a lot of vibration, sometimes they get loose check them every once in a while. If they're corroded, take them off, clean them, and bolt them back on. I have had so many customers come to me with starting problems, and all it was was a corroded or loose contact on any of the terminals from either the positive or the negative of the battery. And if you are worried, worried about your car not starting somewhere, get a jumper pack. Throw it in your trunk. Because jumper cables, hey, they're fine. They work great if they're thick and quality. But you need another battery to jump them with. And if you're stuck in a bad neighborhood, nothing beats popping in your trunk, getting that jumper out, jumping it and driving away. Because that's one situation where, hey, you might just start your car and rub it up and take off as fast as you can. So now you know things not to do when you're starting your car so it will last as long as possible. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.